Hi everyone. I am going to share a couple of things I learned from uh, AWS reInvent in Vegas 2017. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to demo how you can use Cognito to authorize uh, your web, uh, your API gateway, your REST API that you've created, uh, so that it can be your app can provide a little bit of security. All right, so the, what this um, diagram is showing is we have a few different um, AWS components. Cognito is um, what we use to create an identity pool, which is just a bunch of users uh, that, that can be created uh, that have uh, credentials. We have uh, some Lambda functions here. This one is demo sign in. Uh, that allows you to sign up and uh, sign in as well. If you're not signed up, it will uh, sign you up while you're signing in. Uh, this demo pre-sign up is um, just automatically validates um, or confirms the user that signed up so you don't have to take any action. It's all automatic. This demo ping is just an empty sort of shell lambda function that just returns hello world to the caller. Um, but it's tied to this um, API gateway and it enforces some authorization to access this particular um, resource and method call. This authenticate uh, API gateway resource is mapped to this lambda function demo sign in and it just allows um, the client to enter their username and password. All right, so let's do this. So first thing we're going to do is create a Cognito um, user pool. So to create your Cognito uh, user or identity pool, go to the sign into your uh, AWS console and in the search here, type in Cognito, Cognito, and uh, click on Manage Your User Pools and create a user pool. And we'll go through the steps a little bit. Let's enter in demo uh, user pool and step through the settings. And one of the things that we want to make sure uh, is uncheck this email. Um, it, I think in the long run it's good to check it so that when you just sign up um, you have an email if for some reason there they forget their password you can you can go in and um, make sure that they can reset it but for demo purposes we don't need that set and some of these you have to set up ahead of time or while you're creating the user pool because they're not modifiable after you've created the pool. So I think most of these you can't change um, after you've created this pool. So let's uh, do that, do next step. And for now, we'll put um, six as minimum length and we won't require these for now. But if you, you probably should, um, in a real production environment, require these things numbers, special characters, uppercase letters, lowercase letters, things that everybody hates. <laughs> uh, let's see, allow you to sign up themselves. Okay, days to expire. If not use, uh, that was a tough one. For demo purposes seven, I think it's up to you on uh, what what's appropriate for your application. All right, multi-factor authentication, no. You want to require verification of emails or phone numbers? No. Actually, let me go back to here and do. Oh, yeah, these are required. Don't want to do that. All right, next, next. And next. Oh, so you must provide a role to allow Amazon Community to send SMS messages. Don't need anything to do with that for now. Don't need email verification once again. And blah, 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 nothing there. And don't need to add a tag. Probably a good idea 
for a real production environment if you're managing a lot of resources. And hmm, remember users device. Let's say no for now. All right, so let's go ahead and create this. And I am going to just complete this for now. But notice there's this pre sign up Lambda function. And this allows um, you to take action before they fully sign up. And it's going to, um, uh, we just need to automatically confirm that this user is a valid user. But we'll revisit that in a minute. So let's do next step. And I believe that is all the things that we need to put in there. Create pool. All right, and so now we've created a demo user pool. And within there, we'll ha we can add users manually, um, have some attributes and policies. And we can modify some of these properties at some other time. We can do Federation, Facebook, Google, Amazon, etc. All right, so we've created this user pool. And one of the important things here is this guy will be using that. Uh, later. All right, so the next thing that we're going to need are some clients. So if you go to your demo, uh, if you go to your user pool and click on app clients, you can uh, create app clients. And what this is, we'll use this within our uh, Lambda function, and it sort of just helps identify um, which client is uh, sort of using the user pool. So, and then there's some other settings that is related to um, app clients that, you know, is relevant, relevant to your application. You can have multiple app clients per user pool. Uh, so we'll just call this demo um, client, generate a client secret key, which we'll need. And let's do create client, create app client. Doing it, doing it. It's taking a while here. Wonder if my internet is down. Let's see. Nope, it's not down. Just taking a while. See if yeah, it's up. All right, if all else fails, the refresh and see if that's going to. Oh, I'm not logged in. Let's try that and see. I don't see it here. Somehow it logged me out, which is odd. All right, let's try it again. App client settings. All right, let's try this. Add app client. Demo client. Hit create app client. Boom, it's there. And uh, this app client ID is going to be important. We're going to um, use app client secret key as well. So be mindful of that. OK, so we've got the user pool. We've got the app clients. And um, we've got uh, IDs and secret keys, etc. So the next step is to create the pre-sign up uh, Lambda that allows us to automatically um, validate uh, when a user signs up and we add a new user record uh, via uh, or programmatically via our Lambda function. All right, so we're going to create our uh, first Lambda function in this demo. And let's go back to our console home and let's type in Lambda. 
and some of these, if you've been using them, it's going to uh, show up in your recently visited services, but for now, I'll just type in whatever I need inside of that search. All right, so there's a bunch of stuff here that I've um, created, and some of this is off of the reInvent uh, lab, so a lot of these I can't take direct credit for. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is create this demo pre-sign up, pre-sign up uh, Lambda function, and we'll use Python. Uh, and I'm just copying and pasting some stuff there. And for the roles, we'll go ahead and create a new role, we'll create a custom role. Wait, I don't think I need to do that. Let's say no. Let's say yes. <laughs> I don't think there's anything that I'm going to need uh, from a policy perspective, but let's create one anyway. So in this drop, drop down for the IAM role and its identity access management. I say this because I, you know, just to sort of um, be reminded of what that means is access management. All right, and we'll just call it, um, what are we calling this? What do we call the Lambda function? We call it. Uh, oh, demo sign up role. And I don't think there's anything that we need to do to it for now, but if we do, we can just change it. So let's do allow. Okay, so we're not really doing anything special with this function other than returning a um, just a an object that says auto confirm. So let's do create function. All right, so here let's go in and do, uh, we're going to cheat. So uh, go to bleepingbots.com, shameless plug. There's an AWS resource and there is a sign up dot um, py it's a python file let's see if it does it nope the name of it is let's see let me go to my s3 gateway here um, and figure out what the name of it is it is called And again, S3, we got something out there. This guy, AWS resource, pre sign up.py. So let's go back to where did I go? This guy. So it's pre sign up.py. All right, there it is. All right, so here's the file. And it all it does is it goes in. I don't know that we need to import this, but it just returns this um, response to the request auto confirm user it's true, and that automatically enables. Um, I'm just going to copy and paste this into the text field here. That just automatically um, confirms the user that's recently signed up. And let's go in and hit uh, save. And then we'll do a little test. It's going to ask us to create a um, thing. And I don't know the parameters that it's passing it, but let's say username might be one and password is guess it all right so let's do let's give it an event name and let's call it demo um, pre sign up and hit create and what it should do is uh, once we run the test 
some execution details here. All it does is it takes the request and just appends this response auto confirm to it. And that's enough for Cognito to say, hey, user that just signed up, you're done. But we have to hook this up into the um, into Cognito, into the user pool that we created. So we created it, it's successful. Let's go and um, hook it up to Cognito. So let's go to the user pools and um, look at just this general setting. Let's see, where is it? Attributes, policies, groups, attributes, policies, advanced security. I don't think that's it. All right, we're going to pause for a second. I'm going to find where that setting is. All right, so <clears throat> in order to automatically confirm a signed up user or a user that's signing up, we add a trigger. And it's called pre-sign up, and we can just um, add this, um, the Lambda that we just created, which is demo. Oh, where is it? the lambda function that we created. We need to go back to here. It's already been saved. And maybe we need to go in. It should be here. There we go. Demo pre sign up. All right, let's hit save changes on that. Okay, so that should, um, when we at some point invoke the sign up algorithm, that's going to give us uh, automatic confirmation. All right, I think one thing that we missed though is to go back to this Lambda Manager console and there's some clients IDs that we have to update so um, <clears throat> let's go in and go to our user pool and look at the client ID information so that client ID for this uh, client in the user pool is that so let's take that and uh, plug it in here All right, come on let's see And let's paste that here. And then the secret key for that is, I don't think we really need it for this one either because it's all it's doing is returning. Um, I'm pretty sure we don't need it. As a matter of fact, we're not even gonna do that. Let's delete this particular piece of it because it's not, the, I think this might've been some leftover code from the actual sign up sign in. So we'll remove those and just leave this function as is. So let's do, where is it, save here. And let's just for fun test it again. And execution, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. All right, so next step in this process. Well, let's review where we are. We've created a Cognito user pool. We've created some client IDs. We created a uh, demo pre-sign up Lambda function that automatically auto confirms anybody who signs up uh, incognito and it's a trigger off of the um, off of the identity pool next we're going to create this demo uh, sign in lambda and it's going to allow um, clients to uh, sign up or authenticate um, a username and password so let's go back to our lambda management console and take a look at some of the functions there, or go to the functions um, link there, and let's create a new function. Let's call it um, demo sign in. And again, we'll use Python. It's um, out of the box or just some code that I got from the demo. We'll create a new uh, a custom role. And this is going to be called demo sign in. Create a new IM role. 
and let's call it demo sign in. And let's take a look at the policy that we're going to apply. Hit edit, and I'll just give you these warnings here. And I'm going to again cheat here, and let's do a sort of this is a policy that we've uh, that's that was already created from one of the labs I went to. Let's go in and real quick put this in. And so what is in here? Span this out is um, just it allows an action on this resource create create log group that's sort of pretty standard uh, and also does this cognito identity it allows some actions on this cognito resource uh, that lets lets us sort of list and create new roles in there or sorry create new users All right so let's do allow. And so now back to our demo sign in, we're using this demo sign in. So when this function is executed, it's going to be running as this demo sign in role. Um, and it's going, all those allows, it's going to allow us to, uh, the, the Lambda function to access the Cognito resource and take action uh, against that resource. All right, so let's say create function. All right, so back to this one. I don't know why this is like my connectivity is just not behaving well. Let's do. I can't save it yet. I bet you it logged me. Oh, there we go. Come on, lambda function. Let's do this. I'm literally going to lose. Oh, it's been successfully created. All right, let's do a refresh on this. I don't know why this thing is like freaking out on me. Let's do a refresh of this page. And it should let, this is what I was looking for earlier. All right, so this function, once again, you can go to, um, go to bleeping bots and in there type in AWS resource slash sign in dot py and then it will download that for you and you can open it and just copy and paste this code uh, into this lambda management console and uh, the thing that we have to do is go in and change the um, the actual or enter in the user pool ID, client ID, and client secret that we get will get from our user pool. Um, but just to review this real quick, what it's going to do, let's take a look at the Lambda handler that's defined. It's going to go in and create an instance of this Cognito, um, uh, you know, library. Um, so we've got it's looking for a username and password in the um, in the event slash which is the body here uh, and it's going to go in and um, sign up the user um, and the sign up just makes sure that you're signed up if you're already signed up then it sort of returns um, the, it's going to go in and initiate this authentication which does um, admin initiate and it, it creates a user uh, if it's not there or just returns or authenticates you essentially and returns a token. All right, so let's go in and update this user pool ID and we just go to our, uh, our user pool that we created, copy this pool ID here and let's go back to here and just replace that and back to here to our app client which uh, is has this app client ID let's do this and then 
let's show details here. Let's look at the app client secret and do this. App client secret is there. Let's save it. I think that's all you need to do. Next thing, let's let's do a test just to make sure it works. Then we've got the policy set up and this code doesn't break. So let's do uh, do this test. Let's um, do demo sign in, and I believe for the event it's looking for username, which is going to be. Uh, let's do test user. Test user, and let's put in password, which is test password. So, um, okay, there is an error. Let's try to do comma instead of period. All right, so if we look at our user pool real quick, we don't have any users. If we go into, um, once we create this test and run it, we should get some users. So let's do a test and cross our fingers. Okay, so it succeeded. Arg. Let's see what it did. Password, what's the issue? I've seen this before. Flow not enabled for this client. All right, pause. Okay, so figure out what I have to do. Uh, in the go back to your user pool, and in the app client, uh, in the app client itself, let's do show details. Um, is you have to uh, enable the sign in API for blah 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 blah. So enable the sign-in API for server-based authentication and save that. And now I've already executed this test, but um, let me run it again. Make sure I save changes here. All right, um, back to Lambda. Go in and run this test again. And what it will do is it will return this token. And this is something that we'll need in order to um, in order to run some of our web API gateways or our web APIs and allow authentication based on that. So let's uh, go to the next step, which is creating just a dummy hello world uh, and the function that we're eventually going to call via our API gateway that we're going to create that's going to be secured. Uh, or authorized uh, against the Cognito um, user identity pool that we have. All right, so let's do go back to our functions, and now we're going to create a demo ping uh, lambda function. Let's call it demo ping, and we'll use Node.js this time, and we're not really using anything, uh, so. Um, let's do a create custom role for now and let's just call it um, demo ping create a new IM role and let's call it demo ping and hit allow there's for the policy we're not really doing anything we're doing logging um, for other things but no other actions against any resources hit allow and all this is going to do is um, it just did a hello world for us so let's take a look at or click create function here and take a look at the code that it created and it just does hey hello world from lambda so that's good enough and um, let's run a test real quick um, I'll just call it quick test for the event name hit create run it test and it should just return hello world from lambda. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to create a 
we're going to create an API gateway, a REST API via the API gateway services um, to help us um, sign up or sign in and get a token um, that we can use to call another API gateway REST API that is going to call this demo ping. So let's go to um, to our AWS console home. Let's type in API gateway and then we're going to create an API and let's call this one um, demo sign in and I think that's pretty much it. Create this API. It should ask us to hook it up to a Lambda function. Um, so let's do, it creates the API and can add a bunch of different resources here. And resources are just things that um, are going to access uh, conceptually the different things that are in your application. So for this particular uh, API, we're going to create a resource called Authenticate. Authenticate. And let's do um, create resource. And then we're going to create a method on here. Let's see, create method. And let's do a, let's do put and check this. And let's do a lambda. Let's create a lambda function and use this lambda proxy integration. Uh, and it's in US East. We're going to use our uh, demo sign in um, lambda function, which should show up here. Demo sign in. And that should be it. Save. And it just gives you a warning saying, hey, you're about to invoke this uh, demo sign in um, Lambda function. Since we put a policy on that particular uh, Lambda function and we limited it to the Cognito stuff, it, it should be fine. It's not going to be able to access any of your database uh, or you know SQS or SNS or any other resource that you might create unless you give it access. But for this demo, we don't. But you have full control on the policy um, that um, is um, associated with the role that's assigned to your Lambda function. Just click OK on this. And uh, let's do a test. Let's see what it does. When you do a test, you put in some values. OK, so when you do a test, we can go in here and do, um, let's put in username. This is what's going to be passed to the API gateway, which is passed to the Lambda function. And that's going to return um, what was returned from the Lambda fun function test for demo sign in. So let's put in username is test user. And I believe, what did we say the password was? Is it guess it? Let's say yes. Test. And let's see what happened here. Blah, 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 blah. Endpoint requested. And receive response error type, error message. Malformed Lambda proxy response. Interesting. Parameter value headers. I don't need authenticate on there. Internal server error. All right. I'm going to pause and just debug that. Okay, figured out what was going on. Um, the issue is with this integration request. Uh, the type is lambda proxy. So I'll click on that. Um, this, I think, allows you to do some um, massaging of data, but this doesn't need to be checked off. It just needs to invoke the Lambda directly. Uh, so I'll do that, and let's go back to um, this and do a test. And again, let's do 
you can give it the um, the data that the lambda um, function expects, which is username and pass uh, username obviously is test user and let's do password as test password and hit test and so we should get the token for that which happens to be this guy All right, so next thing, um, that's I think that's pretty much set up. Let's set up Postman to do authentication uh, against that, so we can easily, you know, run the next test that we have, which is just doing a ping that's authorized um, against Cognito. One thing we do need to do uh, in order to be able to invoke this um, this REST service from uh, Postman is to go in and um, publish this API. So one of the actions that we can take is deploy API and we'll create a new stage. We'll call it prod and hit deploy. So now if we click on um, this guy prod, let's see, authenticate, put, this is the URL that you have to invoke in order to, um, in order to call that from Postman. All right, so let's do Postman real quick. So type in here Postman, I already have it up. So let's do this AWS sign in test. Uh, you can go in and um, create, uh, choose this post method, enter the, um, the URL for this um, API, for this REST API, I'll copy that. And let's go into this. And so it should execute that. We've got a post method, the headers, uh, content type, type in application JSON for the body. Uh, we're going to uh, create this JSON object with the username attribute tester or test user and then test password is our password. And let's go in and hit send. And we should get missing authentication token. I shouldn't have to do that. Let's see headers that authenticate host. It should be wide open. Is that right? Let's see. Authenticate. So it looks like our setup is a little bit incorrect here. Authenticate put. And let's do not the stages. Let's go to, we don't want this. Maybe save changes. All right, go back to demo sign in. Make sure it's not trying to secure. Authorization is none, so we should be able to call it directly. Authenticate. Method response. Again, let's test it. We've got a username, which is test user, password, which is password, oh, test password. Let's copy that. Test. That seems fine. Now let's go back to Postman. Username, I mean, it looks right. Body is raw applications type JSON and hit send. All right, I'm going to debug.
Okay, figure it out. So back at Postman, we have a the post method, which is what it should be, um, um, if we did it correctly. But if we look back at our uh, demo sign in um, API, we created a put method on here. So the fix should it should be a post method. Um, but the quick fix for now is we can go back to this guy postman and uh, change our method uh, to put or action to put hit send and voila there is our uh, uh, response which is I'm able to successfully log in with um, where's my request object here blah 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 body so I'm able to log in with uh, test user test password uh, and actually, we can do another test here. And let's do Apollo and just do um, guess it. Well, let's do, let me make sure he's, I'm not on there yet. Let's see, user pools, users and groups, refreshes just to make sure we get the latest stuff right. So let us let me go in back to the Postman. And I'm not officially a user. Apollo's not officially a user for uh, this identity pool but but I'll add myself and use the worst password ever and do send and it should sign me up and give me the token uh, for myself or for that user hit refresh here and it's added myself so now I can you know um, authenticate and sign up and authenticate at the same time and get a uh, a token that represents uh, whoever signed in as that user. So the next thing we need to do is create a REST API that is just a ping API. We're eventually going to make it so that it's secured and only uh, calls that have a secure token ID uh, can make the calls. So let's go back to our API gateway and do and create a new uh, API so let's go back here to that create API let's call it demo ping and hit create API and then let's create another and we didn't have to create another API we could have reused the um, the demo sign in if it was more aptly named, you could probably just call it demo API. Um, but let's, we're going to create this demo ping API, but we create another resource, create resource, and we'll just call it ping and hit create resource. And let's add a method on there. Again, we'll call it um, create a method. Let's just create a get method here so we could just invoke it from the browser if you wanted to instead of going to Postman. Uh, and then integration type, again, it's Lambda function. Let's pick our Lambda region, which is US East, and pick uh, demo, whoop, demo ping, and hit save, hit OK. And for this one, let's go ahead and um, deploy the API. And we'll create an another stage here. We'll, let's call it prod. Hit deploy. And this is the a this is the URL in order to invoke that. And let's go ahead and just do that manually here. Message missing authentication token because good question let's see prod ping get I don't know why it wants the authentication token we're going in and <clears throat> ping get authentication none lambda it shouldn't ask for authentication 
here as the east lambda function is doing get demo ping invoke with calling credentials of that matters all right gonna debug okay figured it out um, you actually have to put in the resource there uh, so hit enter ping and then we get the hello uh, from lambda so we were able to invoke this directly without sending any type of authentication information to the API. Uh, but what we really want to do is we want to restrict uh, our API so that it's only for um, users that have logged in uh, to our Cognito identity pool and it's sending that token up. So we'll do that as our next step. So in order to secure our uh, demo ping API, what we need to do is uh, go, go to our API demo ping, click on authorizers and create a new authorizer. And we'll just call this uh, Cognito authorizer. And we're going to use Cognito to, um, uh, to secure our API. So click on Cognito and um, Cognito user pool Let's do demo user pool, and then token source is uh, essentially the header information, uh, the header key that we need to send up. So we'll just call it auth authorization, hit create, and our um, API is now secured. So if we go back to this call again, it should say, hey, you're not authorized. Oh, crap. Oh, did it do it? Did it save it? Let's see. Back to user pools. API gate. Dang it. API gateway. That should be it. Test. Test. Yeah, it should give you an authorized, um, an authorized thing. Maybe I have to refresh it. Refresh. Darn you, API gateway. Okay, so that should be done. Authorizer, demo user pool. Once again, unauthorized request, test. It's not doing it, so let me debug this. Okay, I figured it out. So what you can see is like the process of sort of setting things up, you're, you'll run into bugs and this is uh, sort of natural here. Uh, so what we have to do is when we make changes to our API, we have to go in and uh, redeploy um, those. We have to redeploy our API. So let's just go here and do deploy API. We'll deploy it to production, hit deploy. So now cross fingers, this should fail fail and it didn't <laughs> okay I'm gonna have to debug it some more okay figured it out let's do back to API gateway so we created our cognito authorizer we actually have to apply this to our uh, resource and our method so in here when we uh, click get and it's possible that when you uh, click on this method request, uh, that when you click on here, it you only see IAM. I think it caches, or it just doesn't. Um, it doesn't ref you know recreate this page when you click on these links. But you have to um, select this authorizer that you created. So click Cognito Authorizer on this. Uh, and then go back to method execution and obviously you have to uh, deploy your um, your API so deploy API deploy it to production hit deploy and hopefully this time this thing fails and refresh that and it still doesn't want to fail don't know why should fail. Let's go back to 
API gateway and do a test against this resource. Um, it authorization still none here. Hold on, let's do method request authorization is cognito authorized use. I guess I have to do this check thing. Duh. All right. So now we have authorization against that. Let's go back and deploy this one more time. Production, hit deploy, and um, it should be out there now. So now this time, this puppy should fail. Wow, <laughs> it doesn't want to cooperate. <laughs> fail. All right, let's try this. OK. I think this time it's going to fail. I think I had to do this save changes for some reason. I don't think that's right. It might have just taken a little bit to actually deploy it, deploy it. But I'll click on this, and now you get the message that says missing authentication token. All right, but we're going to fix that. Um, so we are going to go back to Postman and do... Um, let me actually copy this guy, this link, copy link address, and back to here, we're gonna do a ping test, and we're gonna do a get. Um, and so the headers, we need to add an authorization header, and we have to get this value from somewhere. Uh, and our remember our sign in, we're using, um, we're signing in and getting a token so let's invoke this once again and do send we'll copy this id token and use that as our authorization header in our aws ping test so in headers um, we use authorization as that let's take this and delete all that and add this new token and let's do headers, authorization, that's really all we need. We don't need JSON or anything like that, but it, it's a get, so you can't really send JSON up as part of the body. So cross your fingers and see if this thing works or not. Blah, 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 what's the issue? This is AWS ping test. I don't know what that is. Let's do this again. Headers, authorization. Let's do AWS sign in, which is send. And our ID is this guy. Oh, this guy. I think I might have, well, let's see, that was our, yeah, I included too much data on that. Paste it here, and send, and there, uh, authorization header requires credential parameters, authorization header requires signature parameter, okay, I've seen this error before. Let's see, authorization, Headers. Oh, let's try ping. It always gets me. Send. Okay, cool. All right, it finally, finally worked. So I want to say easy peasy, but I think uh, if you do this enough times, I think you can probably um, set it up fairly easily once uh, you get everything squared away. Once you've set up, let, let's let's review what we have. So. Um, we created our user pool. We've got, um, we went in and uh, some general settings here. We, um, we had to uh, create our app clients. We got secret IDs. We have these triggers. Uh, we created demo pre sign up. So when you uh, programmatically invoke the, uh, the sign up, um, it's going to automatically confirm the user. 
The other thing that we did is in our app clients, we went in and made sure that this sign-in is enabled for uh, server-side authentication. Uh, and then we created some um, Lambda. Let's go back to here. Lambda. And we created this uh, demo sign-in, which just goes in and uses the um, identity pool ID. I don't know why that takes forever. Once again, let's try it. Um, we use our pool ID, our client ID, and this will uh, sign us up or sign us in and return an, a token. And then we also have this ping function. Uh, one thing that we need to know about the demo sign-in is the policy around it or the role that it's being executed as which has policies associated with it so demo sign-in and then um, let's go back to I am and the policy is demo where are we at we are well let's look at um, roles and we created this demo sign in role and it has this particular policy that allows us allows us to access Cognito which allows us to um, sign up or authenticate a user against it uh, and then we went and created this uh, demo ping um, demo ping that just does um, it says hello world and it can do a bunch of things but uh, the main thing is to go in and um, go and create these APIs so back to our gateway sorry come on escape out of there how do I close this thing all right is to create our uh, demo site in API uh, which uh, has an authenticate resource on it, a put method that has no authorization there that um, invokes our Lambda function demo um, sign in uh, function. And then that returns a token which we can use to call other APIs as authorization. Um, and we went in the order. And able to be able to do that, we created this authorizers uh, that is um, attached to this Cognito user pool, the demo user pool. And uh, in our resource method, we selected the Cognito authorizer. And this ultimately just calls another Lambda expression, which is our demo ping uh, function that just says hello world. So once you have just like the base structure set up, you can start creating other um, other APIs. You could probably just create a demo API and add <clears throat> ping and authenticate resources against it with, and just set up the authorizers once so you don't have to keep creating an API, cre creating an authorizer. Um, so after you've set the foundation up, you can repeat uh, the Lambda function attached to an API with uh, with authorization against your Cognito user pool that you created. That's it. I hope you find this helpful and you can see sort of the process of just getting through some of this AWS stuff. Uh, but it's probably good to capture all this so that when you have to revisit it, you don't have to go through the whole discovery process of how do you set up your different pieces um, for just, you know, uh, just simple authorization uh, API and Lambda function setup. All right, thank you all.